the Lord today. It's come. It's great that you be able to come to the Lord's house to worship those who together. We gather in the name of Jesus and we gather in His name. He's here with us. For those of you watching online too, we welcome you. And I hope Kathy, Kate, I hope you and Ann are getting to watch this morning. I know it can be sporadic, but if you are, we're sending our love to YouTube. And just there's different ones that tell us they watch us online. And that's always a blessing. And uh, glad that we're able to facilitate that and have that in that way. Let me tell you what, number one announcement that we need to make is next Sunday, we have one service at 1030. So if you come at 11 next week, you're going to come into the middle of the service, all right? So, yeah. so next Sunday, one service at 1030. The handbells are going to do, we think they're going to do some things. The children are going to do a couple of songs. And then our praise team is going to lead us in some music. And we're even going to see if we, we, if we have room in the service for the sermon. I don't, I don't know because it's communion Sunday also. So uh, probably don't have time. No, that is true. So uh, we'll minister in music next week. It's probably what's going to happen. But it's a very special day because uh, also uh, we're going to have a potluck lunch right after church. So we need you, if you can, remember to bring a dish, like a side dish of some kind or dessert. You know, pecan pie, peach, something or other. It'll all be good. Uh, and uh, But we'll after church, we'll, we'll go down and begin lunch. And after church, the children go out and do the Easter egg hunt. Last year, we had, I think, about 1,500 eggs, I think, last, last time. There were kids just making trips to the car, unloading and all that. So, uh, but note the time for next week. It's 1030, and it's going to be a very special service of worship. Uh, and I like when we're able to get everybody together. That, that's a wonderful thing. And then for the lunch, that'll be very, very special. This Thursday, we will have the time at 1 o'clock when we gather to stuff the eggs with the candy. Okay? You know, sometimes we do rice and beans on Thursday at 1, and there's never any temptation to eat any of the rice or beans. But this one's going to be a lot more fun putting the candy in the eggs because at least if you can go two to one, like two for the eggs, one for you, or three to the eggs, one for you, uh, it's going to be really good, and we, we may have enough. So <clears throat> please, if you want to help with that. With that in mind, Tuesday, we have Celebrate Recovery here at the church. I want you to know that the last several Tuesday nights, we've really been seeing God do some really awesome awesome things it's been a real blessing so please keep that ministry in your prayers and then know if you wanted to come help serve the dinner at six you can come about 5 45 and that way you could greet the people kind of you know as a church member say hey, welcome to our church and bless them and uh pray for those that you would see god is working he's doing good things seven o'clock we come upstairs and come to worship you'd be welcome to do that i come each week and then uh Small groups is generally for those coming you know, for CR and have great groups and God's been doing some good things. But So celebrate recovery on Tuesday night. We appreciate those that lead that and give up their time uh, to make that happen. Wednesday morning we have prayer at 7 o'clock here in the sanctuary. Uh, Debbie and I missed this past week. We were in different places. We're looking back. I missed that. I missed being at that this week. And so I'd invite you if you're able Prayer is a powerful thing, and, and I, I believe we felt in our church some of the energy, some of the blessing off of that prayer time, and so know that we do that Wednesdays at 7. Wednesday night at 5.30, our youth and children meet. Uh, we appreciate those who help serve the dinners, uh, and so uh, it's just amazing watching the kids eat, and I mean teenagers especially. I looked over, and this one young eighth grader had like, Five with the slider sandwiches on his plate and I looked away for half a second and looked back and the plate was empty I'm like holy smokes I mean they can put some food away and we appreciate those who prepare the meals and uh, our children are going to be getting ready for next Sunday in that so please be mindful of that is choir meeting I didn't think I, I didn't know I didn't know for choir choir is not meeting this is his he's been at White Oak School for about three months now this is his last week. And then he's headed to the golf course, so he thinks. Okay, so, uh, but praying for him for that. But, but there will be handbells Wednesday night at 7. And if you would like to come join, 
they'll get you up to speed. It would be helpful because they're going to be doing stuff. But we appreciate you and your ministry in that for sure. Uh, Thursday morning, we're not having the pastor's Bible study this week. I have a pastor's meeting uh, Thursday right at that time, so I won't be able to do that. Uh, and then Thursday night, the praise team practices, and they're always looking for people to come join them. I appreciate their ministry uh, as well. That gives us to Sunday. When is church next Sunday? What's the time? 1030. 10.30. Okay, so remember that. And then that will kick us off into Holy Week where we have Monday, Thursday at 6 o'clock. Good Friday will be at noon and at 6. And then Easter Sunday, three services of worship with Easter sunrise. And then we'll have 9 o'clock and 11 services in, in the standard way, but celebrating the resurrected Christ on those days. So a couple of busy weeks ahead of us, but going to be glorious weeks for the glory of God. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Hey, let's continue in worship by standing and joining together and sing our praise to God. Christian faith, and I know it's wordy, but it helps us know what we believe as Christians. So uh, we'll get used to it as we do it more, so bear with us. Uh, our Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through whom in all things were made. For us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, He was crucified. 
crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. serving hamburgers. Uh, the hamburgers cost $7 for the, the meal kind of thing. Things have gone up in what they cost, so they've had to go up. And then whatever proceeds are from that, usually it's anywhere from $100 to $300, will be put into the uh, <clears throat> summer camp scholarship fund to help pay for our kids to go to summer camp. Then also to let you know that uh, Easter lilies, like this week will be the last week if you wanted to get Easter lilies, either in honor of someone or memory of someone. And on Easter Sunday, we use the Easter lilies to adorn and beautify the, the altar on that Resurrection Sunday. So remember those two things as we remember the time. I would also challenge you, I know this our service is a little bit older, but I'm still going to challenge you. If in these next two weeks before Easter, if you could watch The Chosen, the first season of The Chosen, it's been on Netflix. There's ways you can find the different ways that it streams, but one of the easiest ways, if you have access to Netflix in any way, The Chosen is a very powerful thing that's out there today. That The first season is just one part. It starts kind of slow, but about episode three, it'll start really getting you by the other episodes. It's like, man, I watched that, and it's like, man, that's the Jesus I love. That's the Jesus I follow, and it's just really powerful. It'd be a great way to kind of prepare our hearts in celebrating for Easter. So just know that that's out there and pray for that. God is using that in powerful ways. Uh, the Chosen was crowdfunded, which is an interesting thing, and it's the most watched and successful crowdfunding thing that's ever been done. It's really amazing. Joys and concerns today. What are some of our joys and concerns for our sanctuary today? Yes, uh, Sandra. Mississippi, yes. For those that lost loved ones and then the destruction of the town. So many buildings, so many things just really destroyed. So we're praying uh, for, uh, which, what's the name of the town? Uh, it was said in early service, and I just know the town in Mississippi, and then somebody said it in early service. I was trying to get it, but I lost it. But we know God knows, so we're praying for that town. Yes. Peyton, when you get it, let me know, okay? Yeah, let me know. Good. Uh, so we're praying for them, for sure. Uh, you may, don't know if you know, but Mary Cowan across the street passed this week on Thursday. And what a precious woman and... Uh, it's been wild. Her family's come in. They brought a dumpster. And it's like, man, it's going really fast. So praying for the family. You know, Mary would take people in. Many of you know James. James was living with her. James has been displaced. And so we're really praying for James to find a place for him where he can stay. And so we're in touch with him, trying to work with him. But yeah, it's a love, Miss Mary. She is such a tender, precious heart. Talked with her Wednesday afternoon. And she just got back from Corsican with her sister. But I remember driving off on Wednesday. I would quite often pull over and talk to her for a minute. 
And I remember on Wednesday driving off thinking, man, she just doesn't look good. You know, like she was excited for the course of Canada trip. I was hoping maybe to just kind of tire her out, you know, traveling and doing that. But then she passed on Thursday morning. So our prayers are with her family and those that have been impacted uh, by that. Uh, we have a no numerous still health issues, like here in the church, different people to pray for. I always feel a little awkward, like uh, some people like you to know, some people don't like you to know or say it or not say it. So I feel weird if they're not here saying, hey, pray for this. Uh, but I'll just let you know, there's no, numerous things. In a joy, I want to tell you today that in a joy, we had 92 people in the early service. And I cannot tell you how many youth and children. It was full of youth and children. And it's wild because just how it happened, the sermon that the Lord gave me today, out of almost any sermon I could preach, like if you had said there's going to be a big number of youth and children, it's a sermon I would have chosen to preach. And of course, I didn't know that's how it was going to be. And it was just neat how God orchestrated it all. I felt like for the most part, a good number of them were really listening and engaged with it and just pray that God would take from that sermon and sow that into their hearts and into their lives. You'll hear the message shortly and I think maybe you'll understand. But it was really glorious today to have the attendance we had and so many of them being youth and children. Some of those were left over from the uh, silent disco last night. Uh, I'm hoping Stacy gets a nap today because uh, her and Michael, they had a row full of young girls. It was just totally precious as could be. It was fun last night at the silent disco. That was, that was a great time. Rolling Fork. Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Yeah, and that wasn't what, that wouldn't have resonated from what the person said. They, I think they said something else. So I'm sure it was, you know, that community. Uh, four up here, Rolling Fork, Amory, Silver City, and Winona. Yeah, I think they may have said Silver City and Winona. So boy, it was really a, a serious deal. So we are praying for those towns. Any other joys or concerns today? Yes, Chris. Yeah, we're very happy to announce that Jackson got engaged yesterday. How about that? The glory to God. We celebrate with you as the family grows. And I, I've never met her, but she's a beautiful young woman. I've seen the pictures on Facebook, and I know that is a wonderful celebration for y'all. And Meredith, you did a great job with the uh, silent disco last night. That was a great, great time. Thank you. What, what a blessing that was. Terry, thank you for your help, too, with, with everything. Uh, it it was, took a lot to pull that off, and it was a great, it was a lot of fun. It was. That was great. Okay, with these uh, things on our hearts, let's go to the Lord in prayer today. Lord, I thank you for how you love us. Lord, I thank you that you know the details of our lives. You know the struggles. Uh, you know the blessings, Father God, and we certainly do celebrate. Chris and Mary, Father God, for Jackson. One for his job, and so thankful for that job and being in Clear Lake down in that Nassau area, Father God, but then also now for Janice, Lord, and for the uh, engagement. What a blessing. Uh, we celebrate that for Jackson and his life, and he is loved by this congregation, Father God, and it's a joy to celebrate that with him. Just bless him as he launches into this season of his life, Lord, and it's with great joy that we do release him into that father and just thank you for his heritage through his family and that he will remember who he is and whose he is father god thank you lord thank you for the children and the youth that were at the nine o'clock service and that the message at some level would penetrate their hearts to know how you love them and that they're your children and so lord thank you for that but help us even in our stage of life to know that as well father god and to live in the blessing of that Lord, uh, we, we lift up those that have lost loved ones recently. Certainly lift up Mary Callan's family, her sister Elaine in particular. They were dear, close friends as well as sisters and did many things together. And bless her children, Lord, and, and the lives that her life impacted, Father. And Lord, for those who mourn today, we pray, especially in Mississippi, Father God, we pray for assistance and aid to be given. And we pray that you will comfort those families who have lost loved ones there, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. We need you, Father. Lord, many health issues in our congregation, uh, and we thank you for your loving care, and we lean into you as our Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, our healer, Father, and for health issues and those dynamics, Father God, I thank you that you are, you are able to heal. We ask that in Jesus' name. 
We certainly pray for our country. We pray for revival, Lord, in the land. We thank you for what took place at Asbury College and that there's still remnant stirrings of that in different places. Lord, we thank you for the movie, The Jesus Revolution, and that stirs our hearts to know what you have done in the past uh, and that you can do things like that again. And that's what we're praying, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for, for your revival and your renewal and stir our hearts and renew us. We pray for our country. We pray for unity and oneness and understanding. Certainly, we pray for our world, uh, countries like Haiti, Father God, for Iran, Iraq, but then also especially for Ukraine and praying for peace, Father God, in that country, Lord. Thank you that we can bring the burdens, the joys of our hearts, Lord. We celebrate uh, for Jackson and his job and now his engagement and just him going into this season of life. We pray for our youth and children that there can be such same joy surrounding them on their journey as they progress and proceed forward, Father God. Thank you, Lord. It affects our whole family of faith, and we celebrate and rejoice in that. Lord, minister to our hearts today the truth, the love, the grace that we need. And hear us now as we pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. Know that uh, we don't take an offering, but the basket is in the back. I'm so thankful to God for your faithfulness, for your stewardship. We're thankful for God's grace and His faithfulness to us. For those of you watching online, there's ways you can give online that you would be moved to support our ministry and what we do here. Several ways that you can give, and I'm so thankful to God. And we are thankful to God for the way He provides. So we stand, and let's stand and sing our thanks to Him in the doxology.
nice when we get to sing like our favorite hymn. Isn't that right, Jackie? Yeah. It would be what? Yeah, that song. Uh, but she was just telling me, she looked in the book and she said, that's one of my favorite songs. And that's always a blessing when you get to, to come and sing a favorite hymn. And what, what a joy what that is today. It really is. I love that song. Those, those can take us back too sometimes, can't they? I mean, very, very powerful and good on that. Today, we're in the last, what's going to be the legacy series where I'm preaching some sermons that I grew up hearing, at least a former version of it. I've learned that I really have to kind of make it my own, and so you have that. I need to let you know that this sermon has five parts, not five points, five parts, okay? So we're going to walk through it, you know, each part. The most important parts are the first part, the third part, and the fifth part. So you have my permission if you need to sleep through the second or the fourth, you know, but you need to wake up to hear first, third, fifth part. Uh, okay, Peyton, you got that? All right. Very good. The first part is going to be the Scripture reading. And to me, that's probably one of the most important parts of the sermon each and every time, the Scripture reading. You're going to go with part one. Matthew, uh, third chapter, verses 13 through 17. Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, but you are coming to me. But Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so now, for, this, for, for thus it is fitting as to fulfill all righteousness. So then he allowed him. And when Jesus had been baptized, he came up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And then in Ephesians 2.10, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Each one of us were God's workmanship, His masterpiece. That word means His masterpiece, that He shaped us in our mother's womb and we're His workmanship. In Romans 4, uh, Romans 8, 14 through 17, we read, it says, For all who were led by the Spirit of God are children of God. So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you have received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba, Father. For his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. And since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we are to share his glory, we must also share in his suffering. May God bless His holy word. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. I just want you to know that's part one. Very important part. Now we come to part two. Okay? When, when Dad, my, listen to my dad preach, he would tell this numerous times I heard this, that uh, when he enlisted in the Marines, uh, and then he was going to be to go to San Diego for his training and to get ready to go over to the Korean War to fight in Korea in the Korean War. But from the time of his enlistment, it was going to be two weeks before he was going to ship off to San Diego. And so his, if you've heard me preach about my dad's mom, her name, was, we called her what? Boss. Boss. So Boss asked my dad, she said, you know, you got these two weeks. Would you be willing to paint the house before you go to San Diego and off to war? And my dad, not realizing what was going on, thought well, that would be a nice way to serve my family and to best my family. I will, I will paint the house. He didn't realize that when he got up on the ladder, he was a captive audience. A captive congregation, you might even say, because boss would come and stand at the bottom of the ladder and preach to my dad for that two weeks. And she would preach to him on two topics. One of the topics was the evil of the world with the wiles and the schemes of Satan and the evil of the world. But then her conclusion to each sermon would be, remember who you are. Remember who you are. And a part of that might be a Miller. Like, remember a Miller? I'm so thankful for our Miller heritage and a family of faith as the Millers that Boss and Pop 
We're establishing that legacy. In Texarkana, the Millers are, are a pretty fine, upstanding you know, family, and that means a lot to the Miller family. But the first time that Debbie saw me, uh, I went to church, and I had about a six-inch afro. And, and I don't think I was dressed quite to the same specifications of a Miller. So I came into church with the Millers, and Debbie in her mind thought, it's so wonderful how the Miller people welcome the homeless to church. <laughs> So, so it wasn't exactly love at first sight, all right? On her, at least for sure on her side, okay? Uh, and it just kind of shows that the Millers, you know, had a standard and, and not always did I, you know, quite match up to that. But it's neat to have that out there to try to get called into. Uh, but that, remember who you are. Boss, way more than saying a Miller was talking about a child of God, you know, being a, a child of God. Uh, and, and, and sowing that into my dad. My dad said day after day, and boss would preach and he'd talk about how evil the world was. And so many times he said while she was preaching, he would go, oh, it can't be that bad. There's no way it's that bad. And then as he went off into the Marines, he learned it's that bad. He had a very vile sergeant that he was over, and, and the, that sergeant began to mock my dad and his raising and the way he mocked my dad is he called my dad Miss Miller's little boy. And that was his way of mocking my dad and his Christian upbringing was by calling him Miss Miller's little boy. There came a time my dad was one of the chosen few. And in the Korean War, there were 30,000 soldiers that were sent into the chosen reservoir. But it was a trap because the Koreans and the Chinese then closed off the past that they had gone through to get into the Joseon Reservoir and they closed it off and 30,000 soldiers were there in a precarious situation and out of that 30,000 only 10,000 came out and my dad was part of the 10,000 that came out and he was what became known as what some of the Joseon few there came a time one day when 30 people on the front lines had been killed and they had to send 30 more to take their place. And basically you knew that you were sending those 30 to die. The sergeant picked Miss Miller, Miller's little boy to be one of the 30 to go to the front lines. But as those 30 walked off to go to the front line, the sergeant looked at his second in command and he said, if any one of those SOBs survived, It'll be Mrs. Miller's little boy. Did you know it was about a month later that my dad was rolled into a hospital room in Japan and who happened to be in that hospital room was the second in command. And when my dad was rolled into his room, he started laughing. My dad didn't know what was going on and he asked him, sir, is there something funny? And he said, yeah, it's kind of ironic that you're the one wheeled into the room. Because when the sergeant sent you guys off knowing that you were going to be killed, he said, if any of y'all survive, it'll be Mrs. Miller's little boy. And he said, and here you are getting rolled in to the room. <clears throat> I do hope in my life that I get to write a book. I wish my dad had written it, but it'll be Mrs. Little Miller's little boy because it's absolutely miraculous what happened for my dad in the way that he survived in Korea. And my dad would tell stories, and then as he told one story, more stories would come out. But not long after my dad was brought back to the hospital in the safety, one of the nights he tried to dig through his mattress in the hospital room because of PTSD and what he had lived through and survived. But he had some amazing stories, and I believe God let him know that part of the reason why you survive is because you're Miss Miller's little boy and that she prays for you. And Boss was a person of prayer and all of us knew that Boss prayed for us. There was a time at SMU, I was walking across campus and I just stopped and I realized that Boss was praying for me in that moment. And so when I hear remember who you are, I know that it carries weight and impact for me. And I know that in my dad, it was a part of him even being called Miss Miller's little boy when he was in the Marines. And that that's a part of what caused him to survive. Remember who you are. That's part two. Y'all ready for part three? All right. Part three 
Jesus, when he was getting ready to begin his ministry, he went to hear John the Baptist preach. In the Gospel of John, it's recorded that when John saw Jesus, he declared, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. That's not in Matthew's account. Matthew doesn't give that account, but there's a good chance that John said that because John had an awareness that I should not be baptizing you, but you should be baptizing me. That's in the Gospel of Matthew. You know, and then Jesus talked to him and prevailed upon him that said, no, let it be so right now that you would baptize me. And so John relented and John baptized Jesus. But as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens parted, and, and it really, the way it's described, Jesus may have been the only one that really heard the voice where it says, Jesus heard the Father say, Behold my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. You know, it's an interesting theological discussion to talk about what did Jesus know? Okay? Because it, it says that He emptied Himself. And we look at Jesus as a role model that we want to be like Jesus. It would be unfair to us if Jesus didn't really become like us. It would be unfair to say to us, you be like Him. You know what I'm saying? So He emptied Himself. You know, He came then not, not knowing and God was having to real, reveal to him step by step by step. And it was a powerful revelation for God to say to Jesus, my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Do you know what happened? That's in Matthew 3. Do you know what happens in Matthew chapter 4? For Jesus, what happens in Matthew chapter 4? The temptation. He is led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. So do you know how important it was for God to speak His love over Jesus so that when Jesus went to be tempted, Jesus had an idea of who He was. And then I would also say, when Jesus was resisting the temptations of Jesus, what, what is it obvious that Jesus knew? The Word of God. He knew Scripture. And that's one of the ways that, that he withstood the temptations. And I believe that he withstood the temptations because he knew who he was and he knew the Word of God. You ever hear that, come, that spray swear on a stack of Bibles? You know? If you come in my office, right there I have a stack of Bibles. My study Bibles, I have different ones I like. I have a stack of Bibles. On my phone, I have like three different Bible apps on my phone. And isn't it amazing to us how red available is the Word of God, right? I mean, readily available. The question is, do we avail ourselves? But let me tell you what, Jesus obviously knew the Word of God when He was tempted, but it's interesting to think how Jesus knew the Word of God. He didn't have a Bible sitting at home. He would have had to go to the synagogue where they would have scrolls. He would have had gone to the synagogue and they didn't let Him check it out and carry it home. Then the other thing in those days, there was tremendous oral tradition within the homes. Psalm 119 is the longest chapter in the Bible, and it is the Jewish alphabet. If you look at Psalm 19, every about eight or nine verses, it'll have a Jewish letter of the alphabet. And the kids, as they went to school, they would have to learn those eight or nine verses. If they said the letter... Asaph or something like the A word, you know, for their A, the kids would then have to recite those eight or nine verses. And then they would give the B. And they have some other letters beyond our 26. But you can see you can see our ABCs reflected there in a little bit, but it's a little bit different. But that's Psalm 119. And the students, basically every Jewish male for sure, would have known Psalm 119. Kind of shames us in our memory, doesn't it? You know, we, uh, I, can't, I can't memorize Scripture. But it was a part of their tradition. It would have been in their homes. The Word of God would have been in their homes orally in an oral tradition. In the movie Chosen, one of the characters, Mary, uh, it shows her as a child and her dad sowing a Scripture into her life. And it's one of the ways that Jesus ministered to her a little bit later in her life was through that Scripture that she had learned from her dad. But in that, in that, 
we can understand for Jesus how important it was for God to speak his love over Jesus. You are my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased. And that helped put a foundation there in Jesus to stand up to the temptations of the devil. You know, in the Bible it says he was tempted in every way like we are. But let me tell you what, Jesus was tempted in ways beyond anything we will ever know or imagine. Satan understood the magnitude of what was at stake between he and Jesus. And it was an all-out spiritual war in, in what was taking place. And Jesus, knowing who he was, stood up to that. Amen? That's part three. Now we come to part four. You can take a nap if you'd like. Uh, part four. You know, I heard my dad preach. I heard my dad tell about how boss, you know, trapped him on the ladder and preached to him. Ironically enough, in my junior and, and, and senior year, I got where I painted houses to make money uh, to help pay my way through college and get spending money. Me and my best friend, Jeff Spires, did painting. And we would paint houses and apartments and different things. And so I was pretty susceptible for my parents to say, hey, bud, why don't you paint the house, you know, before you go? And I'm like saying, fat chance, no way, okay? And in fact, the last two weeks before I was going off to college, I was pretty scarce around the house. Because one thing I know is if a parent has been given something from their parent, I think a lot of times they think it's their duty to pass it on to the next generation. And so I was waiting for my long sermon from my dad summarizing what boss you had said so the sunday came i was getting ready to head off to college i had gone to church we had had lunch i packed my ford pinto to the max there was barely enough room for me to get in to drive the car and that's when you question how your parents love you because if it got hit from the rear end it was known to blow up and explode in flames so i don't know how that worked but I, I had to be real careful not to get rear-ended in my Ford Pinto. But I had that Ford Pinto packed. And, and as I went out to the car, I actually was thinking in my mind, my dad had pulled me aside for any lecture. And all of a sudden, my dad looked at me and said, Bud, we need to talk. I'm like, oh, man. I remember looking at my watch because I'm going to see how long this takes. And it was 2 o'clock. It was almost 2 o'clock straight up and down. I had thought I'm going to leave to go to Denton, to North Texas University at 2 o'clock. So I was going to get in the car. And that's when Dad said, Bud, I got something we need to talk. Let's go over here. We're going to talk. And I looked and 2 o'clock. I'm like, this will be interesting to see how long this is. I was hoping I was going to get to leave by 3.30 or 4. You know, but just got to take what comes, you know. My dad pulled me aside and, and he looked at me and he said, Bud, I want you to remember who you are. And you know, I had heard him preach about boss and that's what boss had said to him. And so yeah, remember who you are. And then he added to it. He said, and I want you to remember whose you are. And with that, he hugged me and I was free to go. Score. It was like 2.05, and I'm free to go. And that's all he said. Remember who you are, and remember whose you are. I want you to know, especially in my freshman year, I got myself into some vulnerable situations through my own na naiveness a couple of times, and then through my own kind of sinful nature. I ended up in some precarious situations and I want you to know that, that in those precarious situations, all of a sudden it would come to me, remember who you are and remember whose you are. And all of a sudden, when that would hit me, I would begin to try to extricate myself out of whatever situation I had gotten into. And you know, when you look back at that, you realize if that had gone a little bit different, it could have changed the trajectory of my life. Hello? If that had gone just a little bit different, if I hadn't thought of that in that moment and got myself out of that situation, it could have changed the whole direct trajectory of my life. And I know also in those moments that the prayers of my parents were with me, boss's prayer were with me, and, and that those prayers helped those things happen in those moments. And that's not saying I was perfect or anything by any means, but I'm talking situations and everything that could be life-changing for, for where it was headed. 
And I'm so thankful for those words that my dad spoke over me. Remember who you are and remember whose you are. And they were etched into my heart. Amen? Mm -hmm. Guess what? That's the end of part four. Part five. Another important part. So time to wake up. Pay attention. Part five. Do you know who you are today? Do you know who you are today? Has God spoken this to your heart? That makes it even more powerful if God has really spoken it to your heart. Do you know whose you are today? Because I would tell you today, you're not your own. You are bought with a price. And God loves you that much that He sent His Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. God loves you that much. And that's a part of whose you are because the price has been paid. So do you know who you are today? Do you know whose you are today? Ephesians 2.10, it says we are His workmanship. That means His masterpiece. And that means that when you were in your mother's womb, He was shaping you and forming you. Today in sanctuary, today at 9, I'm fairly certain one of the young women that was there is pregnant. And she's married. It's a joyful thing. But I was just thinking today, I hope she can hear this for that child that God is shaping, molding, creating inside of her. He knows her and, her mother, and knows that child in the mother's womb. He knows you. And you're His workmanship. You're His masterpiece. And He has created you for good works. And to know that, that we're His workmanship. I was reading a book recently and, and the author of the book was saying that he was in a worship service one day and he felt God say to him, you are my son. Not like you're the son of God or anything weird, but kind of like I'm a child of God. He felt God just say to him, you are my son. And he, and he said it was transformative. That story came up in his book about five times as he was writing the book and how that story helped change his life and define his life because he felt God speak that to him. So one of the things I know as I'm preaching today is, is I can say things and, and maybe it'll be helpful and maybe you know you can there may be some things to lay hold of, but I will tell you it's nothing like if God speaks it to your heart. Are you with me, church? Like he speaks to you. Because on Wednesday in, in our youth we were looking at Ephesians 1 and some of the things that God declares that you are blessed. You are adopted. You are chosen. Okay? Chosen. Man, it's so awesome to know we're chosen. My grandfather, Pop, was raised in an orphanage in New York from the time that he was four until the time that he was 18. When he was 18, he was put on a train from New York to be sent to Smith County, Texas to be an agricultural consultant, which is some big words for a farmhand. But Pop, when he was from 4 to 18, on sat sometimes set multiple times on a Saturday or Sunday, they would tell Pop and four other of the young men, hey, go get dressed, put on your Sunday best. And they would get dressed up, and they would walk into this room, and there would be a light that would shine in their eyes so that they couldn't see the people that were on the other side of the light, but they could hear their voices, and they were talking. And then they would tell them to go on back to their room. And then on Monday or Tuesday, they would come to one of the boys and say, hey, you pack your stuff. You're being adopted. My grandfather, his name was Adolf. He was never chosen. He lived in the orphanage from the time he was 14 to 18. I just can't imagine how painful it almost had to become to have to put on the clothes dress up, go stand in the light knowing that you probably weren't going to be chosen. And so it can be a powerful thing to know that you're chosen by God and that you're special to Him. You are loved. You are forgiven. You are made alive in Christ. <clears throat> I can say a lot of different words from up here. We sang a song to close the 9 o'clock service about we want to see a victory. And it reminded me in Romans 8.37 that says, we are more than conquerors in Christ. But you know, I wonder sometimes, last night it was interesting at the silent disco, because if you get the silent disco, everybody puts headphones on and they're listening to music. 
And some of the kids would run out of the dance floor into the area where they weren't supposed to be running. And we as adults would say, hey, don't run in here. And they never slowed down because they never heard a thing. They had the headphones on, the music playing, and they just kept running. I wonder how many times God is trying to whisper His love to us or speak His love over to us and we live in a noisy world. We live in a distracted world. And that we live where God is speaking His love or He's telling us who we are and yet we don't hear. Because the noise of the world has us and we can't hear what God would be speaking. Today, I hope as we're sitting here that God would speak His love over us. That He would speak the word to you that you need to hear who you are in Christ. So that today you can remember who you are and you can remember whose you are. Amen? Amen. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Lord, I pray today that You would speak to us Reminding us who we are in You. Reminding us what You've done for us. Reminding us whose we are. Thank You that You have chosen us. You have adopted us. That You love us, Lord. Speak Your love over us today. And give us ears to hear. In Jesus' name, Amen. We're going to close today by, by standing and joining in. This is a day of new beginnings. Day of new beginnings. Let's stand and we'll join together and sing praise to God.